Chapter 94 Battle to Escape 1 Battle to Escape 1 Apparently this area was reserved for the nobles. Many of the people here were dressed in glittering clothes. There were two men in the restaurant that I recognized. Carnell and the royal messenger they are here too? The two of them were sitting comfortably on a sofa drinking what looked like expensive alcohol. Chappie flew close by and decided to stop by to listen to their conversation. For a moment Viscount Carnell looked at Chappie but since Chappie quickly disappeared from his sight he didn't seem to mind. And yet his majesty is in trouble, isn't he? He nominated an academy teacher for the Minister of Justice position. Yes, sir. Hum? The academy? That seat was originally supposed to be ours. The deputy minister of justice should be our minister. The royal messenger was complaining to Viscount Carnell in a very drunken state. I don't know what they are talking about because I started listening to the conversation in the middle of it. I listened and tried to understand the content of their conversation. It seems that the position of Minister of Justice will be vacant next year. It turns out that a noble from a faction called the Academy will take the post. They were talking about court politics. And yet the thought of that Lord Granville's face makes me drink. Yes well, he seems to be on a roll now that Mithril is available. It's the job of the royal messenger to put the lower nobility in their place. From talking about court politics Viscount Carnell changed the subject to the Baron. Thank you for your help this time. Thank you so much for your help in getting this deal done. It's only natural. But still how could White Dragon move at this important time? We need money for the minister's recommendation. Yes I'm sorry about that. Viscount Carnell apologized profusely. This seems to be the motive for what Viscount Carnell has done this time. Well Viscount Carnell's territory has been mining mithril for about a hundred years after all. As the conversation between Viscount Carnell and the royal messenger continued Alan understood that, with the help of money earned from mithril mines for over a hundred years generation after generation the Viscount Carnell's family had been cozying up to and talking to officials and nobles in the royal castle. Is this really okay though? Not everyone in the castle is our ally. It would be troublesome if the baron goes to the royal castle and makes noise. This contract must be signed. The royal messenger confirmed with the viscount. Of course, sir. That's why I kidnapped his daughter. The baron is very fond of his daughter. I've included a letter to make sure he doesn't do anything rash. Apparently when we were kidnapped from the mansion the bandits left a letter telling Baron to go to the royal capital. Now that I think about it the royal messenger's attitude worsened when the Baron mentioned going to the royal capital. Yeah, well anything to make sure he signs it. The royal messenger said that he didn't care about the rest as long as the Viscount could get the Baron to sign the contract. Yes, sir. If he doesn't sign the contract I will send him one of his daughter's arms and that would be enough. And when Zinov invades you want the assassin to take care of it. That's what I'm thinking. However we don't want Dagraha to lose and have Zinov run amok in our territory. Oh well that's all right. If the knight errant crosses the territory we can condemn Lord Granville for it. The crime of sedition is a serious crime. Thank you for coming all this way. Well that's just great. But you know? I've done so much for you. I know what you're talking about. It's the mining rights, isn't it? I'll do as promised. The royal messenger said don't forget to thank me. The baron can't do anything unless Cecile is brought back. If I don't bring Cecile back the baron can't do anything. But still the Viscount attacked the Baron's house and kidnapped his daughter for Mithril rights? It seemed that enough money was involved to justify the death of a person and it was at that moment that I was about to hear a valuable story from both of them for future reference. MMM. Oh no Cecile's awake. Cecile who had been sleeping next to me woke up. 
Hey little girl you're awake, but you need to behave yourself. M.M. Hum. When Cecile woke up she was angry at being tied up and protested with her whole body. However since her mouth arms and legs were tied up she couldn't say anything nor move. Then Cecile noticed me tied up in front of her. M.M. Hum. Oh don't kick me. You're pretty dexterous even though your hands and legs are tied up. Cecile tried to wake me who she thinks is still unconscious. However I who was sleeping like a log showed no reaction to Cecile's kicks. Be quiet for a moment. Your servant is sleeping off his medication. We're about to reach the city of Carnell. Is this magic ship heading for Carnell City? Well Carnell is on it, so it's natural. I'm sure Carnell can do whatever he wants over there. I have to do something before we reach there. It hurts. This situation is very bad because we are heading to Viscount Carnell's place. While I was thinking about this Cecile moved her body like a shrimp and kicked me from behind. Hey Helgei, shut her up. Marcus the bandit who was punched in the stomach wanted Cecile to be quiet. Well that's just the way it is. If you don't want to be beaten up, stay quiet. M.M. Hum. Cecile continued kicking me. She might have thought that if I woke up things might get better. M.M.M. I've got to do something about this. My cards are correct. I'd better get to it. I check my status again just to be sure. Name, Alan. Age, 12. Talent, Summoner. Level, 41. Strength, 1040 plus 240. Mana, 1620 plus 20. Attack, 570 plus 200. Endurance, 570 plus 635. Agility, 1065 plus 679. Intelligence, 1630 plus 104. Luck, 1065. Skills, Summon 5, Create 5, Synthesis 5, Strengthening 5, Grimoire Expansion 4, Inventory Sharing, Delete Swordsmanship 3, Throwing 3. Experience, 37839560 slash 50 million. Skill Level. Summon, 5. Create, 5. Synthesis, 5. Strengthening, 5. Skill Experience. Create, 12,482 slash 10 million. Synthesis, 10265 slash 10000000. Strengthening, 826-9330 slash 10 million. Summons available. Insect, DEFGH. Beast, DEFGH. Bird, DEFG. Grass, DEF. Stone, D.E. Fish, D-Rank. Holder. Insect, 1F-Rank 1E-Rank 29 D-Ranks. Beast, 10 D-Ranks. Bird, 2 G-Ranks 4 D-Ranks. Grass. Stone, 2 D-Ranks. Fish, 1 D-Ranks. I think I have to beat you otherwise you won't understand. Saying this Helgei started moving over to Cecile. Cecile stared at Helgei in horror. Just when Helgei raised one of his hands. Put him to sleep Swallowtail. What the hell? As the bandits were startled a nearly meter-long butterfly-shaped earank insect Swallowtail appeared flapping its wings and spreading yellow scales. The room was filled with yellow scales. Okay, one's asleep. It's working. The dagger user of the group collapsed and fell asleep as if his batteries had run out but Swallowtail was immediately smashed by Helgei with his sword and turned into a glowing bubble. I tore off the ropes I was tied up in by force. I can't be tied up with this level of rope. Helgei reacted to my move. The Deerank bear appeared in front of Helgei. What the hell is this? Gua! Bear used its special skill, crunch, and attacked Helgei. 
However, Helgi calmly dodged and slammed Bear into the ground. Although he was not able to kill it with a single blow, Helgi was faster than the bear and bear could not catch him. The bear which had been strengthened and had its strength increased disappeared into a glowing bubble after being cut three times. And. Gah. You little. You're dead. My fist dug into Marcus' side. Summoning bear was just my plan to distract Helgi and to buy time. My target was Marcus, who was hit by the assassin Dagraha. I punched him in the same location where Dagraha hit him. It's common sense to take out the weaker ones first. Now two bandits are out of the fight. Marcus clutched his stomach and convulsed as he fell face first to the floor. Together with the sleeping bandit two out of three of the bandits were out of combat. The bandit Helgi who had been watching slowly took his battle stance. Chapter 95 Battle to Escape 2 Hey Marcus! Ha! Huh. I threw an iron ball at Helgi who was worried about Marcus' safety. Because I threw it from the front it was easily repelled by Helgi. You little shit! I took the dagger that Dogora had given me from inventory. Hum, even holding a weapon against a human, I don't seem to have any hesitation. No, it is the same when I was attacked at the mansion. I found myself surprisingly calm when we were about to kill each other. Are you afraid of a kid or something? I provoked Helgi who I fought against at the mansion. You little shit. Braun hold him still. What the hell is this? Braun Durank Stone appeared at Helgi's flanked, who was provoked, slashed at Braun with his sword. Two Brauns surrounded him and used their special skill, protect. Okay, he needs three attacks to defeat a bear. That'll buy me some time. While I punched Marcus, I was watching the battle between Helgi and Durank Bear from Chappie's point of view with the help of sharing. I have already figured out how long it took Helgi to defeat a bear. With Helgi's attack power if Braun defended he would not be able to win easily. In the meantime I summoned Harami and buffed myself and my summons. All right now go chew. And Sifter use, spider thread. Two Jirank insects who looked like leeches attacked Helgi who was unable to move. Then Spider used, Spider Thread, to further restrain his movement. Hum, so Chu works. My summons debuff is effective even against humans then. But Cecile didn't glow from Harami's buff just now. Did it not recognize her as an ally because she isn't participating in the fight? There are many things I don't understand about my first versus game. The assassin is not here. I should finish this quickly. Cecile was not affected by Harami's buff, nor was she debuffed by Swallowtail. I don't know what conditions decide this, so I want to verify it, but there are at least four enemies, including the one not here. I want to defeat the third one Helgi and escape as soon as possible. I slashed my dagger with all my strength at Helgi's, who was surrounded by two bronze. Shit! Shit! It's hard, or maybe I'm just too weak. Maybe it's the performance of this dagger. Should I increase my attack and strength to push through? Or should I use my agility and hit a few times? Even with an attack of 750 Helgi's defense was too high for my attacks to penetrate. My dagger bit into his flesh, but it wasn't fatal. Helgi's durability was quite high perhaps because he is a swordsman. This is the first time I've cut a human but in this world humans are more durable due to their status. I felt strange that some mysterious force was at work and it was not fatal. I dominated the fight because I was faster. I kept attacking him and it was almost one-sided as he was much bigger than me and he couldn't move due to the brawn. Gay triple A. Finally, I kicked him in the gut and blew him into the wall. His head hangs down in a heap unconscious. At that moment an announcement was made inside the magic ship. Thank you all for your patience. 
the magic ship Baona will be arriving at the city of Karnal soon. The magic ship has begun its descent, so please do not leave your seats. I managed to defeat them, but I'm running out of time. I have to free Cecile. I feel a tremor that I've never felt before. I could feel with my body that the magic ship had begun to descend. Cecile was still tied up. If we arrive at the city of Carnal like this, we'll have nowhere to escape. Lady Cecile, I'll untie you now. M.M. Hum. Cecile who had been watching the battle, which included my summons from start to finish was astonished. I didn't care about that and was just about to tear off the rope when... Whoa! What the f asterisk asterisk k is this? What the hell is going on here? You lot got defeated by a child? Then Dagraha, the assassin hired by Viscount Carnell, appeared. He was quite wary of my summons, whom he had never seen before. I immediately let go of Cecile's rope, turned around, and summoned another brawn. Gay! MMM! I was kicked up in the air with great force. I was kicked in my chest from the side and my ribs broken in several places and I was slammed against the wall. Damn! Is he an agility type? He's so fast. Didn't this guy just disappear for a second? Chappie had captured Dagraha's location so I knew where Dagraha was even though I was looking at Cecile. Since I couldn't summon it without looking in the wanted direction I had to turn around but that time seemed to be enough for Dagraha. I was kicked up against the wall with such force that I disappeared even from the gaze of the chappie whom I was using sharing on. What's that look? Haven't you ever seen someone use a skill? Damn this kid got you? Dagraha kept his distance from my summons and slowly pulled out the rapier at his waist and approached me. Skill? Did he just use a skill? No, I'll verify later. I can't fight him he's too strong. Then there's only one way. With this one blow I knew that my opponent's strength was extraordinary. I used the grass of life to restore my health. And... Hey, how much longer are you going to sit around? What? Why is the Viscount here? Dagraha reacted to Chappie who was shouting from a blind corner of the room. The voice was Viscount Carnell's, which Chappie imitated with its special skill, voice imitation, and he appeared to be upset. At that moment Spider used its special technique, Spider Thread, and wrapped it around Dagraha's body. I quickly rushed towards Cecile. I retracted my dagger and ran while holding Cecile in a princess carry. What the fuck is wrong with these people? Spider Thread doesn't have much effect? Bronze be a wall. I busted down the door and started to run straight out into the corridor, but Dagraha was right there with me. I turned around for a moment and summoned two bronze. The corridor was only about two meters long and not even three meters wide. Once I summoned bronze, Dagraha couldn't move on without defeating them even if he wanted to. The Jirank and Dirank insects that I had already summoned flocked to Dagraha in an attempt to stop him. In the meantime, I ran up the stairs as fast as I could. Spider thread doesn't have much effect. Bronze be a wall. I busted down the door and started to run straight out into the corridor, but Dagraha was right there with me. I turned around for a moment and summoned two bronze. The corridor was only about two meters long and not even three meters wide. Once I summoned bronze, Dagraha couldn't move on without defeating them even if he wanted to. The Jirank and Dirank insects that I had already summoned flocked to Dagraha in an attempt to stop him. In the meantime, I ran up the stairs as fast as I could. MMM, one of the bronze is down. I don't have much time left. Should I just run to where the passengers are? No, that wouldn't change anything. Then. I was at the door that leads outside to inspect the outer wall of the magic ship or something. Looking out through the small window of the door I could see that we are slowly making our way to the ground. 
I could see the ground clearly because of the lights illuminated by a magic tool or something to prevent magic ships from crashing into the land. Putting Cecile on the floor, I pried open the door. I looked down in the gusting wind and it seems that we are still more than 100 meters above the ground. I'm sorry, Miss Cecile. We're going to jump from here, but don't worry. M.M. Hum. Cecile declared an unvoiced complaint about what I was saying. I've also changed the card composition to increase my endurance. Bronze blessing will increase my strength and endurance, but I don't have time for that. I changed the composition of the cards in my holder by changing the F-rank beasts to the D-rank insects which increases my endurance. D-rank stones take a long time to synthesize so I went with D-rank insects instead. It's okay. It's probably not a problem in terms of endurance. Status doesn't lie. A quote popped up in my brain that I don't quite understand. M.M. Hum. Cecile protested with her whole body even more than when she woke up all tied up. However, despite her protests I grabbed Cecile firmly and held her so that she wouldn't fall. As a precaution I wrap Cecile in the cloak that I keep in my inventory. Well Alan let's go. While Cecile desperately pleaded with Alan to stop with tears in her eyes Alan jumped off the magic ship under the starry sky. Chapter 96 Escape 1 I jumped off the magic ship with Cecile in my arms. We seemed to be more than a hundred meters high but I figured it would be no problem due to my status, which had been raised by my level and blessings. Then both of my feet hit the ground with tremendous force and the momentum of my landing shattered the neatly set stones. Ah! It hurts! The bones in both of my legs shattered and broke. However I used grass of life as soon as I landed and repaired the bones in my legs at once. The grass of life can also heal bones. I found out about it after being kicked by Dagraha. I checked on Cecile. A few debris hit the cloak but Cecile seemed to be unharmed. As expected Cecile was unharmed. I think of endurance as a kind of shock absorber that protects the body from physical damage. As I have always thought when I have fought with bandits increased endurance does not mean increased muscle mass in my body. It doesn't make me more muscular or harder. It's just like a protective coating that protects me from shocks taking into account my status value. The physical damage this time was the impact from the ground where I fell from over a hundred meters carrying the Cecile. I was not unharmed and my legs were broken but the shock was killed by my endurance and the impact was not transmitted to my upper body or Cecile. I've already confirmed that healing bones is in the scope of physical recovery after getting kicked by Dagraha. Lady Cecile, I'll untie you now. I used the grass of life on Cecile when we landed so I don't think it's a problem but I checked to see if she's injured by the pieces of debris once again. Since she doesn't seem to be injured, I quickly cut the rope with my dagger. Hey! Alan! I'm sorry. Lady Cecile, but the magic ship is already coming down. As soon as she was released from the restraints Cecile protested with all her might. However now is not the time to listen to Cecile's complaints. Once again, I put the cloak on Cecile. If we don't get out of here quickly, they might shoot arrows at us from behind. Hey, listen to me. Where did you get this from? What the hell was that? Lady Cecile. What? Right now it's important to ensure Lady Cecile's safety. We'll get out of here right away. I will carry you on my back, so please get on my back. I spoke a little more forcefully to Cecile. I asked her to get on my back so that I could give her a piggyback ride. It's hard to run while carrying her in the princess style. The magic ship was going to land on the ground soon. Cecile was unhappy but after considering the current situation she got on my back. Hey you're moving too fast. Hold on tight. You'll bite your tongue if you talk. As I started running Cecile was surprised at my speed because I was at least running faster than a horse. 
We're running out of time. Hollow use, night vision. I summoned four hollows into the night sky and looked for a gate. Then I hurried towards the gate to escape outside of the city. Oh! Great Dagraha went to explain the situation to Carnell. That'll buy us some time. I checked the situation inside the magic ship as I ran. Chappie was still inside the magic ship and while fleeing I never neglected to check their situation. He's a very capable thief. The hollow ahead of us discovered a city. It seems to be a slightly larger city in Carnell territory. I ran towards the city. However the gates were already closed and the gatekeeper was standing guard for the night. Hey Alan. Are we going into the city? A bonfire was burning and Cecile notices the town. She talked to me over my back as we headed straight for the city. Yes. It looks like the gate is closed. That's right. I'll try my best. Let me talk to him for a minute. Hey, can't we use the city to spread the dagra, huh? Oh, hey, stop. I was told by the gatekeeper to stop and not to proceed any further. He was obviously suspicious of a boy dressed as a servant with a girl on his back this late at night. He even pointed his spear at me. I'm glad you're here. Well, we're in town. Just a little more patience, young lady. Uh-huh. Ignoring the alarmed gatekeeper and out of breath Alan spoke to Cecile as if relieved. I'm sorry, gatekeeper. Could you please let us into the city? No, I can't do that. The gate has already been closed. We can't let in suspicious people like you who come at this hour. No, we are not suspicious. I showed him the coat of arms of the Granville family. The Granville family, huh? No, but why this late at night? I showed him Granville family's coat of arms, and he flinched for a moment. It is Viscount Carnell's territory, but it is too unnatural that two people from the Granville family of the neighboring territory came together at this late hour. No, actually the carriage broke down a little way from here, and we're stuck. The young lady didn't want to stay there. I lied fluidly. The carriage is broken and the lady is selfish so I'm in trouble. I pushed all the blame on Cecile for what happened. Well no but. Oh this is going to work? Dagraha is going to be here soon and I can't ask and answer any more questions than this. I'm well aware that it's impossible for me to do so so can't you just close your eyes this time? I quickly reached out my hand to the gatekeeper's hand. The gatekeeper was scared but he then looked at the object Alan handed him. It was glowing golden in the reflection of the bonfire that was burning next to the gate. I handed him one gold coin. Well I have no choice. But even if I let you through the inn is closed. I'll see what I can do about that. He implied that he would spend the money and let me stay there. With a good grief. The gatekeeper led us through the door next to the gate, which looked like a service entrance for gatekeepers. Alan and Cecile entered the city to escape being chased by Dagraha. He's a very capable thief. The hollow ahead of us discovered a city. It seems to be a slightly larger city in Carnell territory. I ran towards the city. However the gates were already closed and the gatekeeper was standing guard for the night. Hey Alan. Are we going into the city? A bonfire was burning and Cecile notices the town. She talked to me over my back as we headed straight for the city. Yes. It looks like the gate is closed. That's right. I'll try my best. Let me talk to him for a minute. Hey, can't we use the city to spread the dagra, huh? Oh, hey, stop. I was told by the gatekeeper to stop and not to proceed any further. He was obviously suspicious of a boy dressed as a servant with a girl on his back this late at night. He even pointed his spear at me. I'm glad you're here. Well, we're in town. Just a little more patience, young lady. Uh-huh. 
Ignoring the alarmed gatekeeper and out of breath Alan spoke to Cecile as if relieved. I'm sorry gatekeeper. Could you please let us into the city? No, I can't do that. The gate has already been closed. We can't let in suspicious people like you who come at this hour. No, we are not suspicious. I showed him the coat of arms of the Granville family. The Granville family, huh? No, but why this late at night? I showed him Granville family's coat of arms, and he flinched for a moment. It is Viscount Carnell's territory, but it is too unnatural that two people from the Granville family of the neighboring territory came together at this late hour. No, actually the carriage broke down a little way from here and we're stuck. The young lady didn't want to stay there. I lied fluidly. The carriage is broken and the lady is selfish so I'm in trouble. I pushed all the blame on Cecile for what happened. Well, no, but... Oh, this is going to work? Dagraha is going to be here soon and I can't ask and answer any more questions than this. I'm well aware that it's impossible for me to do so, so can't you just close your eyes this time? I quickly reached out my hand to the gatekeeper's hand. The gatekeeper was scared, but he then looked at the object Alan handed him. It was glowing golden in the reflection of the bonfire that was burning next to the gate. I handed him one gold coin. Well, I have no choice. But even if I let you through the inn is closed. I'll see what I can do about that. He implied that he would spend the money and let me stay there. With a good grief. The gatekeeper led us through the door next to the gate, which looked like a service entrance for gatekeepers. Alan and Cecile entered the city to escape being chased by Dagraha.